In this video, we're going to cover the use of inertia as a complex resonant filter. Inertia is designed as an exponential slew limiter with momentum. So how does it work as a filter? Well, it turns out that's all a filter is. An exponential slew limiter, where the slew rate is called cutoff frequency, and momentum is called resonance. Of course, we know that the implementation details of filters matter a great deal, and inertia has its own unique architecture. What sets inertia apart is that it can do complex or wave-shape dependent filtering. It can separately control the cutoff frequency and resonance of the rising and falling part of the waveform, as well as control the wave shape of the resonance. We'll begin with a simple filter patch. The inertia on the left is set up as an oscillator, and the one on the right is doing the filtering. The oscillator is plugged into the in jack, and we're taking the output from the second order out. Inertia is set up in skew mode, so the controls are rate, or cutoff frequency, and momentum, or resonance. We also have the skews for these parameters, which we'll get to later. The second order output filters at 12 dB per octave, similar to a state variable filter. You can instead take the output from the first order out, and you get a very gentle 6 dB per octave filter. The first order output has a bit more pronounced resonance as well. The skew knobs control the difference between rising and falling rate and momentum. And while it is useful to do complex filtering in skew mode, it's easier to demonstrate in rise fall mode. Since the waveform has a quick rise and a slow fall, notice how not that much filtering is done by the fall knob. The fall is already slow, so we have to make it really slow to make a difference. The rise, on the other hand, is where all the high frequency content is. As the wave shape changes, the situation is reversed. Until most of the high frequency content is on the fall, and most of the filtering is done by the fall knob. Because the rise and fall rate are different, as the wave shape changes, the effective cutoff frequency of the filter changes, bounded by the low and high frequencies of the rising and falling section. With momentum, you can see that adding fall momentum just makes the falling section fall a little faster. The rise momentum, on the other hand, makes those wiggles in the waveform that boost the resonant frequency. But this is going to depend on the particular wave shape that you're using. In addition to controlling the range of the cutoff frequency, the rise and fall rate control the shape of the resonance. Jagged resonances add a lot of harmonic content to the original signal, and this is what gives inertia that characteristic distorted sound. For wave shape dependent filtering to be interesting, you have to feed inertia an interesting wave shape. The harmonic shift oscillator is ideal for this, as its wave shape changes gradually over time as its harmonic shift in relative phase. You can create some really interesting effects with these modules. We're really 
hear anything that sounds shifting and organic will do the track. Your inertia is being fed with a wave paper sound. That covers all the basic controls, and of course there are lots of possibilities for what you do with it. For more info, see the manual on nsinstruments.com, which has in-depth information on exactly what is going on with the machine. 